Howdy, howdy, my fellow gamers, and welcome to our second monthly Patreon q and I love doing these videos, even though this is only the second one we've done. But it's really cool to have such a fantastic community, and ones that want to ask questions and do these types of videos. So, without further ado, we're going to dive right on in. Originally, I was going to just do one from each person, but a couple of you submitted a couple questions, and uh, honestly, they're all pretty good questions, so I'll probably touch down on all of them, depending on the time length of the video. Uh, guys... If you ever want to ask a question, any tier patron from our Patreon, even the $1 tier, can submit for our monthly Q&A videos. So, let's do, go ahead and start right off. Farsender asks me, what is your top five non-Arkham Heroes super games? Non-comic heroes like Infamous Counts. Okay, this is problematic because, to be honest, I haven't really played that many superhero games that aren't Batman. Um, I love the Injustice games. They're incredible. Uh, I never played Infamous because I was so mad at Sucker Punch for abandoning Sly Cooper. Um... Amazing Spider-Man back on the PS2. Yep, nothing over there. Yeah, no, not really seeing anything. Um, so I guess I would have to go with uh, those two games, Injustice, Injustice 2, and Spider-Man from the PS2 days. Because uh, that, that's really all I've played that I would consider superhero games. But a uh, great question. I wish I just had a great answer for you. On to the next one. Oh my god, Lex asks, Do you get, ever get discouraged in your dreams and goals? If so, how do you combat that? Uh, yes, I do every single day. I doubt myself, doubt my capabilities, uh, and doubt my dreams and doubt my goals. And it's just because the world of content creation is so oversaturated. It's so difficult to actually break into, let alone make a living off of at some point. Uh, and so I combat that in a myriad of ways. Uh, sometimes I'll just really throw myself into editing a new YouTube video and making it the best I possibly can. Uh, like my Rainbow Six Siege Agent Glass video. That one was a lot of fun to make. Uh, it took a long time to do it. I'm working on a Valkyrie one right now. Uh, or the Fallout 76 Funny Moments series that we've been doing. Um, or I'll just kinda... I've got some great friends. I've got some great supporters and community members that uh, I'll just DM. And I'm not gonna be like, hey, I doubt myself. But it's nice to be able to message these friends, not supporters, but legitimate friends that I have in the community, and just talk to them. And, you know, how's your day? What's up? I, I learn about their personal lives. And uh, to know that that has happened because of my content creation, I never would have met any of you guys if it wasn't for this. Uh, that, that gives me hope, and that makes me feel really good about what I have done so far. And makes me excited about where we can go. Even if we don't make partner, even if we don't end up doing this full time. Enough of you still give a shit to support my dreams and my hobby that that's how I get through it. Emily comes in and asks, oh wow, she asked a couple. Let's go ahead and knock these out. If you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? Fuck! If you could lock up one person in a mental institution, who would it be? Myself. Uh, you've been given an elephant. You can't get rid of it. What would you do with it? Uh, I mean, this is the Circus of Freaks, and elephants are very, very big attractions in the circus, so I would, uh, monetize and monopolize on that shit. And, uh, name him Edwin, just like our circus mascot that we have, Edwin the Excitable Elephant. Uh, so yeah, great questions. Great questions. Uh, also, to legitimately answer, if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? Uh, probably stop being an asshole, even though I'm an asshole. But stop being an unwarranted asshole. Uh, love yourself. And more importantly, stop abusing animals. Like, I don't give a shit what you guys do to other humans. War, murder, it's gonna happen. Fucking leave the dogs and cats alone. I'll kill you. Colton comes in and asks, Five things you can't live without and why can't be dumb shit like guitar either. Oh, well, my guitar is definitely one. Uh, just because music has been a huge part of my life. Uh, I, I love playing it so I legitimately would not be able to live without my music and my capabilities and abilities to play music uh, it's a great outlet that has kept me alive honestly so I could not live without my guitar uh, I could not live without spaghetti because it's my favorite food and I'm such a picky eater that it's nice to always have a food I'll eat um, I could not live without my dogs I mean eventually at some point I will have to but just they are such a great fountain of joy and love for me. Uh, they're a huge impact on my life. 
Um, honestly, I probably wouldn't be able to live without games. Uh, they, I love reading books. I love watching movies. I just love these other worlds and narratives and characters that you can throw yourself into. Like, if you're having a bad day, you don't have to be freak. You can be Aragorn uh, from Christopher Palagini's Inheritance Cycle, or I could be Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. And what I love about games is that it's the exact same thing as watching this incredible movie or reading this fantastic novel, except you get to live it. You get to play it. You get to be it. And uh, so that's why I love games. It's a great form of self-expression, and uh, it, it's stress-relieving. It's a good outlet. Like, I've never done drugs. I smoke cigarettes and I drink beer, but I have never done weed once in my life. I've never tried the harder shit, obviously, and I don't feel a need to. I've got outlets already. So I couldn't live without games, spaghetti, guitar, my dogs. And uh, for the last one, I wouldn't be able to live without the internet. And it's kind of a shitty answer, especially in 2019, because like I was talking about the other day, how we've become so plugged in that it sucks. Uh, everybody's always on their phone. Like, it's hard to go out and make friends the old way. Like, if I'm at a bar, I can't be like, hey, let me buy you a drink. Because the people are like, fucking creep. No, dude, I just want to socialize. Like, I just moved to an entirely new state. I know nobody up here. I have no friends. I would like to be able to just, you know, go talk to people. But you can't because we're all plugged in and that's just weird. And because I love Twitch and I love YouTube and I love streaming and I love gaming and I love watching things online uh, and it's so much easier to be able to keep up with my friends and family than having to call or write letters to all of them. Yeah, the internet. Uh, and then, I mean, there's going to be the smart ass in the comments that's like, you didn't say food, so you're going to die. I said spaghetti. Well, you didn't say water, so you're going to die. I'm just being realistic. Like, okay, these are the five things. I'm not going to waste them on like oxygen, food, water. Kiwi comes in and asks, how many kiwis have you eaten in your life and which was the most memorable? I've eaten one kiwi in my life and it was the most memorable because it tasted like ass. Uh, she also asks, if you could give anyone in the world five pieces of fruit, what five pieces of fruit would you give them? There may be one type of fruit represented among all the pieces. Well, they could all be one type. Uh, strawberries and grapefruit are my two favorite, so I would do that. Banana is a good source of potassium. goes great in cereal, too, so I would uh, give you a banana. Um, a green apple. I don't like the reds. I'd give you a green apple. They're healthy. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. I haven't eaten an apple in about seven years, but, you know, let's not talk about that. And for the last one, uh, a kiwi. So that everybody can try it once. And because your name's Kiwi. Rabbit comes in and asks, Who are your top three YouTubers besides yourself? Uh, Rooster Teeth. Well, the Achievement Hunters, pretty much. Like, I love the Let's Play series. I love the Off Topic podcast. Um, but I, I really just love Rooster Teeth and Achievement Hunter. That's what gave me the idea for the Gamers of the Roundtable was I, I wanted to do a community-based YouTube channel, which unfortunately is still pretty much just me, but the foundations are slowly starting to pop up in the fact that you guys are seeing more of Chrono, more of Doom. Uh, the podcast is becoming a thing. Uh, Vanoss and all of his friends, Wildcat, Terrorizer, Nogla, Delirious... Um, and I know a lot of people don't like the fact that that's how they're all referred to as, you know, Vanoss and his crew. That, that's how I found them. And Vanoss is the most popular out of them, not because he works harder or anything. Like, they're all incredibly talented YouTube artists. And I know I'm kind of cheating with that answer of Vanoss and the crew. But that whole little... Um, and then it gets really tricky. Uh, I'd probably have to go with Nick Nocturnal or Jared Dines. Uh, they're both music channels. Um, they both... Nick Nocturnal does covers, and he'll learn a cover of a brand new song that dropped maybe 70 minutes ago, and then upload that cover that night. He learns it by ear. Uh, it's incredible. He also does memes. He does educational videos. Um, same thing with Jared Dines. He just doesn't do the covers as much. He does a whole bunch of original content, which is really cool. Uh, he's, I want to say, the biggest music channel on YouTube. But uh, I would tie Nick Nocturnal and Jared Dines as my third favorite uh, YouTube channel. But there's so many great content creators out there. Um, I love Boson Bunch. I love Chaotic LFS. Um, Grizzy. Uh, Lemonade. I, I watch way too much YouTube. And the problem is it's a rabbit hole. You start with one and then you click and then you click and then you click. But yeah. Rooster Teeth. Van Austin Company. Jared Dines slash Nick Nocturnal. Great question. Great question. Uh, Big Ninja comes in and asks, what was your first game ever? And what was the game that got you hooked? Uh, the first game I consciously remember ever playing was The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. 
on the SNES. And that is why it's in my top favorite Zelda games of all time. I've still never beaten it to this day because I was playing it as a young child, not knowing what the fuck I was doing. But I loved the music. I loved the world. I loved trying to figure out the puzzles. So I, uh, yeah. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past was the first game I ever played. The game that really got me into gaming that hooked me, though, Sly Cooper. Sly 2, Band of Thieves. After that, it was a dark descent into the world of gaming. Like, I, uh, I started on an SNES. I had an N64. These were all my dad's consoles. So, you know, I'd play. I played Star Wars Pod Racer. I played Super Mario World, which was fucking incredible. Um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. And then I went through a period of time where I didn't have an original Xbox or a PlayStation 1. But uh, my cousin had a PS2 and he gave it to me. And uh, I saw a trailer on TV. Uh, it Very similar to this poster I have back here. Where uh, Sly knocks on the uh, screen with his cane and goes, So, are you in? And uh, it just hooked me. I was like, I want that game. I got straight A's on my report card. My mom bought it for me. Uh, I played the shit out of it. And I've played that game more than any other game ever. And I still love it to this day. And after that, I just kept getting games for my ps2 non-stop then i got an xbox 360 a ps3 and you guys see where i'm at now rabbit also asks what's your favorite pasta shape i love penne pasta uh, elbow macaroni is also great and uh of course just good old spaghetti general stargazer asks we live in a world filled with so many stories of superheroes and supervillains if you could choose a superpower that could be used both for good and bad, what would you pick? Not only that, but how would you use it for good and or evil? That is a doozy of a fucking question, and that's probably how we're going to end that video. Um, uh, I'm thinking possibly time travel. I think I would use time travel. I would take time travel as my ability, and I would use it for both good and bad reasons uh you'd be able to go back in time and meet so many cool people you'd be able to go back in time and you know say goodbye to people that you were never able to uh, you'd be able to go back in time and fix things and solve problems you'd be able to go forward into the future find out the winning lottery numbers buy it win and everybody that's like oh if i win the lottery i'd give it all to charity no you won't you want to spoil yourself and there's nothing wrong with that guess what i want to give to charity too i would also like to own a mansion and a fucking nice ass car you can do both. Um, and I mean, you'd be able to use it in fights. You know, like if I'm in a super villain superhero fight and I see somebody get shot in the face, just rewind time. Um, or I'd just go into the future to see if I'm about to get shot in the face and then be like, okay, so don't go there. Uh, so I think realistically that one would be mine. Like there's so many cool powers out there. Um, I would love the power to be a billionaire, like Tony Stark and Bruce Wayne, because Iron Man and Batman are some of the coolest fucking superheroes that ever existed, and they have no superpowers. Um, but yeah, I mean, flying would be so cool. So would being able to run at, like, the speed of light. It, there's so many cool powers out there, but I think the one that would suit me best would be time travel. Or hulking out. <laughs> but yeah, time travel. But uh, thank you all so much for watching this Patreon Q&A. Our next episode will be up January 1st. So guys, if you have questions you want to ask, feel free to join the Patreon link down below. Shout out to my incredible patrons on Patreon. I love you all. And as always, stay freaky.